Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Can you guess what time it is? If you said NVIDIA time, you would be correct. So we just got done taking a look at the 4070 Super, which is sitting over here on the test system. And we are now ready to look at the next iteration which is the 4070 Ti Super. And you can see here's the 4070 Ti that we looked at uh, earlier, well, actually last year. And uh, the Ti Super now is next in line as we bring out the Super Series. And really, when you look at these two boxes, they're pretty much identical. In fact, you could walk by uh, both of these and not realize they're different. The only real obvious difference is we've got Super listed there. And then you can see the memory sizes are uh, a little different between the two. Of course there's a little more going on than just memory and we'll go over that here in a little bit. When we look at the back of the two different boxes they appear to be again almost identical. The only clue is this one calls out the Super and if we look down here in detail at the SKU you can see this is the tough RTX 4070 Ti. I think the O is for the overclocking 12 gigabyte gaming edition and this one is the again it's the tough uh, 4070 Ti S for Super 16 gigabyte. So there's really nothing else to look at on the outside. So let's get the box open. And again, this is not a Founders Edition card, but here's what it looks like. It's packed in there pretty well. So let's get this out of the way first. Now this is the 4070 Ti. I have a feeling just like the boxes, these are going to look virtually identical and it will be tough to tell them apart. So it looks like off to the side here in the box, they give you this little guy right here. This is a little standoff that you can use to support the end of the card that sort of hangs out. And I'll show that a little later. But this little thing sort of extends so that you can support the end of the card that kind of is heavy and wants to push down. And then there's your power connector. It's a two into one. And there is a, let's see, what is this? Oh, it's a little Velcro. Probably for cable, cable cleanup. Cable management. Oh yeah, I remember this. This was uh, in the last card in the 4070 Ti. So you assemble this and it's basically like a little cell phone holder. It sort of props up next to your next to your computer. This is some sort of a little trading card. I'm not real sure exactly what you do with it, but you've got it. Uh, warranty, okay, here this illustrates the little graphics card holder I was showing you a moment ago that sort of supports the end of the graphics card because uh, they can sort of get a little heavy on one side. Certificate of reliability. Quick start guide. And these are usually pretty much, yeah, plug them in, turn them on and go in multiple languages. All right. So much for that excitement. Now let's go ahead and get this out of the box or bag. We're done with the box. All right. And just as I suspected, these are almost identical. I got to make sure I don't get them mixed up. All right, I can get a little closer here. So this is the, whoops, this is the 4070 Ti. This is the 4070 Ti Super, and you can see the configuration of the uh, ports there is exactly the same. So we've got two display ports here. We've got two HDMI ports across the center, and then we've got a last little display port there on the end so they are again configured exactly the same no surprises and there is a fair amount of protective plastic on here 
that you have to peel off. And as exciting as this part is, I will go ahead and do this offline. Okay, I think that's most, oh, I've got here on the fans. It's funny, you know, like a year later, sometimes you find this little protective plastic in places that you didn't know it was stuck. Okay, I think, whoop, one more, one more big one. Covering the entire back, if I can get it off here. Easier said than done. There we go. There we go. Okay, that should be. That should be it. Okay. Okay, this little bit of software here is called GPU Tweak 3. You can see it up there at the top. It's gone through several iterations over the years, but this is what you use to monitor and control your Asus GPUs. Now you can see here that there's a lot you can do. Monitor pretty much every aspect of the card. You can get in there and change the uh, fan curves, create a custom curve so that the RPMs change based on the load or the heat generated by the card. And you can see we got some other cool things at the top. So you can go into a little overclock mode and give things a little tiny boost. There's a silent mode, which is kind of like a zero RPM. Here's your custom user mode. Uh, let's see, we've got on-screen display settings. You can go in there and select what things you want to see on your on-screen display. Uh, here's your GPU-Z. Give that a moment to populate. There you go, so you can see everything you could possibly want to know about your GPU. Now one thing I always like to mention, and it's not quite as important with these lower power cards, but I still like to mention it. Uh, your power connector here needs to seat completely with the socket on your graphics card. Now you can see right here there's no gap. It is uh, completely seated all the way around, all the way flush. And you'll hear a little click, which is, if I can get it to focus, it's over here at your little latch right here. It engages and uh, you have to push on this to release it. But when it engages, when you push it in, you'll hear a little click as this thing uh, locks in place. It's a little hard to see there, but anyway, pay attention to your power connector. And we do have some RGB effects here on this graphics card. It's not a whole lot, but it's a nice little effect there, a little accent on the side. Now, I think this only works with the Asus Aura Sync uh, on an Asus motherboard. I fooled around with it for a while on this MSI motherboard, and I haven't been able to figure out how to get it to connect or at least be recognized because right now it's picking up the motherboard, the uh, RAM, and I have a mouse over here that uh, also has the RGB effects and they're all linked. However, the graphics card does not show up. So it may be something that only works with an Asus motherboard. Okay, so now we'll look at some of the power usage here. This is for the 4070 Super. You can see it's recommending a 650 watt power supply and the power usage here is uh, 200 average and 220 uh, total. And if we come over here to the 4070 Ti Super, we can see that it recommends an extra 50 watts. So we're at 700 and our power usage is 226 with a total of uh, 285. So there's a little difference. So what we'll do next is sort of see what this card draws when it's under a load. And the way we do that is through the PCAT software there that comes from NVIDIA. Now this is special software that monitors the real-time power usage. And you can see right here at idle, we're not using very much. We're between maybe 12, 15 to up around 20. It's just sitting there not doing much at idle. And part of the PCAT system is there's a special riser there that uh, sort of intercepts the power that's coming from your power supply and runs it through this little circuit board where we can monitor the power usage again in real time. So you can see the power comes from the power supply here and uh, goes through this card. And then it goes to your GPU. So now you can see I'm running the MSI combustor which stresses the GPU. And you can see we went from idle to a quick jump up. And you can see that our average here Actually, let me reset that. Let's start over. And there you can see now 
around 286, 287. Looks like it peaked a couple of times, a little over 306. But we can watch the power usage again in real time while we stress test it. And we can look at some of the details here while we are running the stress tests. We're running at about 60 degrees, 61 degrees Celsius. And let's see, you can see the frames per second. GPU usage and the power. And I can tell you right now the fans are not really running that fast and they're pretty quiet. So uh, one thing I'll do here is crank them all the way up so you can see what they sound like. So I use the GPU Tweak It 3 or GPU Tweak 3 to crank the fan speeds up to 100%. I don't know why that one went to 98, 99. Okay, apply. There we go. And you can hear them, but keep in mind this is out in the open, and uh, when this card is in a case, it's going to be a lot quieter. But definitely moving some air. And we set both of them to auto, we'll hit the apply, and they should spool down. And there they go. And since things should be good and cooled off, I don't know if we'll go down to zero RPM or we'll just go down to a low speed idle. Looks like just a low speed idle. And I switched it to silent mode, but I see a zero dB fan. That might be a, let's see what happens when I hit that. Oh yeah, that brought it down. So it'll be interesting to see what temperature they kick back on. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, fire up the stress test again and see when the fans kick on. Okay, so the stress test is running. We'll monitor the temperature. It should be slowly creeping up. Oh, they just kicked on. So it looked like it was right around 50 degrees Celsius when they started. So we should maintain around 60 if this is, uh, if the fan profile here for zero decibel mode is the same as the default mode with the zero decibels turned off. So let's watch this a moment and see. So uh, I would say, yeah, it's holding right around 60, 61 C. And uh, when you're in the zero dB mode, what that really does is, sure the fans are quiet, but when you're at idle anyway, they're really not making any noise. But what that does is it just keeps the fans from running when they don't need to. So you save a little bit of power. And real quick, I went ahead and put the card into a system build just to show this little standoff here how it works. You can put it out here at the end of the card that sort of wants to uh, hang down, and this just supports the weight of the card. So you adjust the right height to lock it down, and then make sure the card is resting on it. And that takes the stress off of the mounting on this end here and takes the stress off of your PCIe socket. Now over the years, one thing I've been using my GPUs for is protein folding. And what this does is simulate uh, the folding of proteins in your cells. This is crucial. If the proteins do not fold properly, you end up with a whole lot of different diseases and genetic issues. And you can use your GPU to simulate these uh, proteins that fold. And this data is used for research. And if you're interested, you can go to foldingathome.org and check it out and see if protein folding with your GPU is something you want to do. Now, you can use your CPU also, but uh, any more the GPUs are several orders of magnitude more productive than uh, CPUs out there. So anyway, for example, you can see my average number of points per day in different projects will yield, let's see, this is 18, 2, 15, different projects will yield different point values, and this is what it's capable of doing in a day. And this number will vary quite a bit based on which projects you're working on. But basically what you're doing is you're using your GPU to crunch numbers as part of research uh, into how the proteins fold and how they can misfold. And this goes towards the development of new drugs and therapies for a lot of different diseases and genetic conditions. And the points aren't really worth anything. It's just fun to compete with other teams to see who can generate the most points. 
Okay, it's time to do a few benchmarks. I'll do some gaming benchmarks. I'll start off here with Borderlands 3. It's one of my standard, standard go-to games. Uh, then I'll go to F122 for some racing, and then I'll do some uh, uh, Cyberpunk 2077, and then I'll do some synthetic benchmarks. I suspect this will scale right where it should, uh, right below the 4080 and right above the 4070. Uh, TI. Okay, so if we look at the numbers here in a little detail, you can see this is the 4070 Ti Super, and it does scale right in between the 4070 Ti and the 4080, which is uh, not really any surprise, but this just proves that uh, what NVIDIA was initially stating about it being the, uh, both of these, both of these Supers kind of fill in the gaps between the 4070, the 4070 Ti, and the 4070 Ti, and the 4080. And with power usage, uh, that proves to be the case. Same thing here with the numbers uh, when you compare it to the card uh, above and below it. And with the DLSS on and off, you can see it definitely makes a difference on your frame rates. Okay, so here we're looking at some of the specs uh, across the 4070 series. Uh, this is all available on the NVIDIA website. So if you want to dig down a little deeper, but this is just the basic information. And you can sort of see the progression from uh, right to left from the 3070 Ti as we migrate into the 4070 series. And you can see how each model here, uh, the changes in the capabilities as you go from the 4070 to the 4070 Super, uh, up to the 4070 Ti, and then finally with the 4070 Ti Super. So you can see, again, the performance really does scale uh, with what we're seeing here in the different capabilities as we move up the line. Okay, uh, if we look at the pricing, you can see here uh, the two main cards that are on the radar now are the 4070 Super and the 4070 Ti Super. Uh, you know, some people will argue one way or the other about the pricing. It's too high. Uh, it needs to come down. I don't know, the 4070 Super retails at $599, the 4070 Ti Super retails at $799. Is there enough difference in performance to justify the extra $200? Uh, some people would say yes, some people would say no. I think it does. I think you get a decent card for $799. Uh, if you don't want to wait, uh, you're going to have to pay those prices now. If you wait a year, you'll see these prices come down as the next series is released. And that's not a bad plan to follow if you want to get some decent performance but not pay the top dollar. That's one way to approach it. And that really follows through for the 4080 and the 4090. You know, if you want that level of performance, there's, a, uh, there's an entry fee that you have to pay to get there. And, uh, you know, until the next series comes out and those prices start to drop a little bit, uh, it kind of is what it is. And I say wait a year, uh, you know, a lot of times it's just a few months and you'll start to see some pricing uh, come down a little bit. You know, anytime something is released uh, right out of the gate, it's always going to be the uh, highest price point. Okay, so overall, I think the 4070 Ti Super is a nice card that fits right in between the 4070 Ti and the 4080. It scales right in there. Again, no surprises. It's pretty much what we expected. And it's always interesting to see these cards as they go from model to model uh, through the progression and throughout the 40 series all the way into the 50 series that we'll see at some point. Uh, the performance improvements just keep getting larger and larger while we're using less and less power uh, while doing that. So uh, I really like this card. Like I said, I would give it the Overclockers Club Gold Award. So this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.